This video is an unboxing of eCollar Technologies Finger Trainer Educator Model 330. Howdy, I'm Al the Dog Trainer. This channel is your resource for raising a happy and reliable dog. If you find this video useful, please like it. And if you want to stay up to date with everything that I have going on, don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell. I'll be going over what you will find in the box, including the transmitter, receiver, and the finger trainer for model FT330. So this is the packaging for the finger trainer educator from eCollar Technologies. So you're gonna find several things on here. Obviously they've got a new color packaging. Here you see the model number along the side. And on the back is where you're gonna find some of the features that this remote collar has, anywhere from its half mile range to the finger trainer with a 12 foot range, all the way down to the two year full warranty. But you're probably here because you wanna see what's inside the box, so here we go. So inside the box, you're gonna find the power charging cable, a lanyard, two plastic bags, transmitter, receiver, the finger trainer, and then underneath this packaging, you'll also find a warranty card, a metal allergy card, an addendum page, and the owner's manual. I'm gonna be pulling each one of these out so you can take a good look at them. So first up is the charging cable. It's a standard plug, five volt, one amp. It's got a fairly long cable and you can charge the receiver and the transmitter at the same time together. Next up, you're going to find this lanyard which attaches to the receiver and allows you to wear it around your neck for easy access to all the buttons on the transmitter. After that, you're going to find two plastic baggies. In this first plastic baggie, you're going to find the longer contact points as the short contact points are already installed on the receiver. In the other baggie, you're going to find these three tools. This tool is used to remove the skin from the transmitter. This tool is used to come over the contact points on the receiver and allows you to find out if it's actually functioning or not. And the final tool in the baggie is this tool that allows you to remove the contact points when you put this end over the end of the contact points that are on the receiver and allows you to unscrew them. So now we have the transmitter for the finger trainer educator. On the front side, you're going to find this area right here that actually is the display for your transmitter. Next up, the new, uh, the new updated name, and then underneath that, there is going to be a status bar that allows you to know about battery life as well as if you're sending a signal to your dog or to the receiver. On the side, there are a variety of buttons, beginning with the black S, which the black S actually coincides with whatever value is in this screen. Next up is the red S. The red S is a multifunction button depending on the mode that you're in. Some people use it as a boost button. Some people use it for a second dog. Some people use it as a different way to touch the dog, whether it's momentary or a continuous button. The next area here is a notch that allows you to remove the skin. This next area right here actually is where you're going to attach your lanyard so that way you can wear the transmitter around your neck. After that, we have this red dot, which is actually a magnet, and which is the way that you actually go about turning on the receiver. Next up, we have these two notches, which allow you to use a tool that actually removes the skin from the transmitter. Now here is the T button. The T button is generally set as a vibration uh, from the factory, but it can also be used to make a tone followed by stimulation. On the top of the transmitter, you will also find the antenna, which is removable. It can unscrew and obviously be screwed back in. Next up is the rheostat. The rheostat is actually what allows you to control the volume of the remote collar and also is what allows you to lock the collar as of when you press it, it will actually uh, go and lock the collar itself by using that particular mechanism. Now on the back, you're going to see several things. You're gonna see the on off light button, which is this large L button. It is used to uh, turn on the light feature on your receiver and it is also used to power on and power off this transmitter. Next up is the mode button, which allows you to change from momentary to continuous and to combination mode. Now there is a new update to this button. If you've ever used any of the other transmitters from eCollar Technologies, you must now press and hold the button for a couple of seconds to have it move from mode to mode. Okay, so here you can see the eCollar Technologies phone number printed there for their excellent 24 hour customer service. 
Here is the model number that's printed on the back. And then the final thing that you'll see here is the power gasket or the gasket that covers the power port. And there is where you would actually connect it to be charged. One quick note, to turn on the remote caller, simply press the L button, which is on the back here, press it for two seconds, and you're going to see that the display then turns on. Sometimes it's a little difficult to film this, but there we go. You can see the volume that's on the collar and the real stat allows you to change. See if it, there we go, got to get it right. The real stat allows you to change the volume on the collar. This collar does come with 100 different levels. Um, it does not say 100 when you get to the top of the range. It actually says the word high. You'll see a couple of other things. You see the 1D flashing. That means that the collar is currently unlocked which allows me to rotate the dial for easy access to higher numbers or even to scroll it down as well. There is a C on there which denotes that it is in continuous mode right now, which you can easily change by holding down the mode button for two seconds. I'll go ahead and do that now. So there's a screen, hold it down for 1001, 1002. There's a little beep and now it is in mixed mode. I'll do that again, hold it down for a couple of seconds. 1001, 1002, and now it is in momentary mode. And then if I press it one more time, 1001, 1002, now it is back into continuous mode. So now down here, you see the status bar now that the collar is actually turned on, that there is a steady, slow flashing green light. And that just means that the collar does have plenty of battery. If you ever see it flashing amber, or flashing red, that means that the power is particularly low and it is time to charge your collar. The collar does charge pretty quickly in about a couple of hours. Next up in the packaging is our receiver, which comes with a standard three quarter inch biothane collar, which is particularly long, fits practically any dog. So in this area, this is what I consider to be the top. This is where you have the status bar that allows you to know if the collar does have plenty of power, if it's about to die, and also if it is receiving a signal from the transmitter. Next up is the red dot where you would touch the transmitter to it and that actually turns on this unit. That's where your strap would actually go through and you can see there it's printed there e-collar technologies just in case you need some assistance or additional accessories. On the back side, you can see the standard contact points the model number RX090 and of course the serial number and then at the top of that you're also going to find this port right here which is where you would actually go about charging the collar. There is one more area of interest and that is this little divot right here that actually is just a gasket covered by rubber and doesn't do practically anything that I know of on this receiver. Now I would like to show you how to actually turn on the receiver and you turn the receiver on by touching the red dot that you see here to the red dot that you see there. It doesn't have to be an exact touch but it does have to be somewhat close. I'm going to try to capture it and you should see this go green when I turn it on. There it goes. So you see I didn't bring it up quite close. I put it maybe midway and now you can see that the receiver is on. If I go back now and I touch those two together again, there's the red light and now the receiver is off. The transmitter does not need to be on in order to turn on the receiver. All you have to actually do is touch this red uh, magnet to the red magnet there anywhere close and that should turn on your receiver. Just a couple of things that I'd like to show you. So if this is your first time using a remote collar from eCollar Technologies, I would like to show you just a couple of things. When you send a signal from the transmitter to the receiver, when you press the button, you'll see the red status light there. It'll turn on for a maximum of 10 seconds if you keep your finger depressed. So I'll hold that. And now the color will turn off automatically. And as you're doing that, you'll be able to see the level that actually is being sent to the color. And now you can see that as well. So next up is the finger trainer. The finger trainer has a nice soft button on the top. Okay, there you can hear maybe just a little bit of the clicking. And it has this on off switch when the, with the vertical line that has it turned on. And if you turn it this way, then that is off. Anytime that you depress the button on the top, you will see a little red light flashing there, meaning that it is sending signal 
to the transmitter and then the transmitter itself is sending the signal back to the receiver. So you press the button and it sends a signal. If it does go for those 10 seconds like I mentioned earlier, then it will, I believe, it automatically turns off. Let's see if that's the case. And no, it does not. So when you press the button, you will see the little LED begin to flash, meaning that it is sending a signal to the transmitter and the transmitter then in turn is sending a signal to the receiver. It does come pre-installed with this Velcro strap so that way you can adjust it to practically any finger size. Here you also again see the name of the manufacturer, the model number, the FCC ID, and of course the serial number. There are four screw holes there so that way when you do have to change the battery out, this is where you will access that. I've been using the finger trainer for a couple of days now and so far so good. I am enjoying it. I have found a few limitations to it, but it is a really great training tool and can't wait to show you guys my full review. I did want to show you guys how this actually works. It's a pretty cool device. So if I press this button here, that's actually going to be assigned to the black S, which then the black S would send the stimulation to the receiver. So I'm going to do a couple of those. When I press the button, you'll see that the red status bar turns on there, and then you also have the red status bar turning on there and allows you, as you depress, that actually sends a signal from there to there. So pretty cool piece of technology, should be useful for many individuals and many applications. You can still use the transmitter to send a signal to the receiver. As you see, I'm pressing it here. I still have the finger strap on my button, but you can press it, still send a signal. And obviously you can also have your red button if you need a boost, and you can still get it to vibrate too. Next up, you're going to find the warranty card. The warranty card does have a QR code that you can use your smartphone to scan and fill out your registration information instead of filling this out and mailing it in, or you can also fax it too if you wanted to do that. Next up is a notice for the possible metal allergy. Be sure to read over that before placing the remote collar receiver on your dog. After that is an addendum to page 10. There are a couple of things that have changed with this new software that is part of the finger trainer. Be sure to read over that to be aware of any of the new changes that they have made. The final thing that you're going to find is your owner's manual. They've really gone through a lot of detail in here. Really like the owner's manual. Read over it a couple of times and very well done. So congratulations to them over at eCar Technologies on again putting out a fantastic piece of equipment. So are you considering the finger trainer as a tool in your dog training toolbox? Be sure to let me know by leaving a comment down below. If this video was useful, it would mean the world to me if you gave it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. I'm going to have a full review on the finger trainer coming out soon. Thanks again for watching. Have a great day.